Okay, we're going to make some comments about those difficult points from yesterday. Uh, please do not uh, mix it up and, and, and make it seem in your notes as if we're going on to a new subject. Again, we are going back and uh, resolving some issues about what came before, all the way from the beginning. So originally we spoke about three lacks of a nature, a lack of a, a nature of having any characteristics, lack of a nature of having any uh, birth. And then what was the third one? Lack of knowledge of having any ultimate, ultimateness, or having any ultimate nature. And, and then we started off from that. And then when we got to Xianglongs, we were trying to establish uh, what it meant to be uh, those three groups. Uh, and then we got into to what we were trying to identify what the three different groups were. And when we got to dependent things, then again we had three characteristics. What was the first one? Uh, three characteristics. Uh, three features <coughs> of. Uh, that it is the uh, arena? In yeah, it is the arena in which uh, constructs do their thing, that it was the thing which is, gets, uh, is the same. 
and then finally that it was characterized by being a produced thing, as something that has produced nature. So then uh, we went through all that and we talked about about all those features, and we were trying to establish that those three qualities, general qualities, those three lacks of a, of a nature, which meaning the three groups in general, applied to all existing phenomena. Then we got into uh, describing in detail what it meant to be uh, the, the, the group called those things which are dependent. And then among the group of those things which are dependent, we had three features, a third of which was displays a quality of being a produced thing. And then we were trying to go through uh, one by one. We talked about the five heaps. We talked about, for example, the four aria truths. And we tried to establish all three groups with regard to each of those objects. And we went through uh, representative examples of each of the objects. We started with physical matter. We spent some time on the first aria truth of suffering. And we went through and tried to describe how each of those three groups posited by the school applies to each of those objects. And we, we went through that, and we did that pretty well. Uh, we spent some time on it in the last few days. But then we, we came into like a philosophical conundrum, like a problem. And that was, when we get to uh, something like the 12 uh, ayatanas, right, the 12 doors of sense, and then when we get down into the, the, the door of sense of the mind, the mind sense, as opposed to the physical senses, and then the object which the sense of the mind can hold, which is all those things which the sense of the mind can think of or, or, or focus on, among that group there were things called unchanging things, uh, unchanging objects. And then we were uh, sort of stuck on uh, how difficult it was to establish those three groups with regard to an unchanging thing. And how do you describe, how do you establish uh, constructs, how do you establish dependent things, and how do you establish totality or emptiness itself with regard to an unchanging thing, you know? Especially, how do, you, how do you do that if one of the qualities of a produced thing is that it exhibits the qualities of a produced thing, which means that it had to be changing. Okay, so we had that problem. That was one of, we have a couple of uh, problems here. Now, uh, Geshe says it's, it's not that I'm inventing these problems. It's not like I want to give you guys a headache. Uh, these problems uh, really do come up in, in all presentations of the subject. You know, these are natural, difficult, uh, and crucial points that arise in any presentation of the subject. So we have to look at them, and we have to dig into them, and we have to find out uh, what they're all about. And he's very adamant that he doesn't want you to mix this up with the flow of the teaching. He wants to make sure that you're sensitive to the point that we are going backwards. You know, we are revisiting something that we were working on before. And he doesn't want you to now start, you know, in your notes, he wants you to be very careful on one hand, he doesn't want you to jam it all in and screw up your notes and, and make them illegible by going back and, and cramming it into some place where there's no place to put it. On the other hand, he doesn't want you to put it into your notes in such a way that it appears that Geshe Chaturinka taught this thing out of order, you know, like in a confused way, you know, like he was jumping around and, and, and like that. He wants you, he says, maybe it's even better if you start on a clean sheet uh, in your notebook and say, this is a, 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 an issue from before that we chose to go back and examine. And, and then uh, don't stick it in the, uh, the notes as you have them now. You know, go make a separate sheet or a separate section and block it out and say, this is an issue that came from before, and this is not the flow of the teaching as, as Jensen Carpenter did. That's what he did is, that teaching on this island, that's what you can do. That's what you can do. だんだんディーンのそうそうもらまじゃってそうもらじゃねまし<音楽><音楽><音楽><音楽> しゅうにしてやがる。なさ。やるま、じゃるよ。しゅうしょうまにしてやがる。なさ。ああ。しゅ。うん、これです。うん、これに取り込んだ
감촉이 이제 당연히 나도 가라 그랬잖아. 기지 중이 나갔잖아. 취 기지고 가는 직구는 거. 취 기지고 딱방인가? 취 기지고 딱방인가? 직구는 거. 그래서 다 감촉이 이 나라 가라 그런 거 왔잖아. 취 감촉이 가는 거 왔어. 오 대체. 다 대바시 이 나는 가라 그런 거 왔잖아. 오 그냥 오 땅이 당연히 이 나는. 아니? Uh, so the, where we're going back to is page 25, line 5, and that's where they talk about, oh, this the same, uh, three groups, right, the, the three attributes, apply to all existing things, and then they go through and apply them to the remaining four heaps. They've already talked about the heap of physical matter. Uh, then they go on to the 12 uh, doors of the sense. Then they go on to the 12 links of dependent origination. And then he says it applies to the four kinds of sustenance, to the six uh, categories, and to the 18 categories. And now when you think about it, if you go through all of those uh, groups, there's a lot of uh, groups that involve unchanging objects. For example, mm, in the five heaps, uh, among the five heaps, uh, yeah, sorry, cancel that. Uh, in the four truths, in the four ayah truths, there's a truth called the cessation of suffering. That cessation of suffering is an unchanging thing. So in the four truths, we have one of the truths, uh, truth number three, which is, a, which is a problem, okay? Because it has unchanging things. So how do you establish that the three groups apply to it when one of the three groups is those things which are called dependent, meaning those things which are changing, one of whose famous characteristics is to exhibit the nature of a changing thing or a produced thing. So how are you going to say that this applies, how are you going to establish the three groups with regard to an unchanging thing when one of the three groups is dependent things and one of their three characteristics is that they don't, uh, I'm sorry, that they, that they are produced. Okay. So that's a problem with a uh, third of the four Arya truths. It's also a problem with, as we've already pointed out, in the 12 doors of the sense. When you get to the door of the sense, which is the object of the mind, and within that category, uh, a door of sense called, it's called door of sense, meaning uh, inside of that category, there are going to be unchanging things. Because you do, with your mind, perceive unchanging things. So unchanging things are going to be in that category. When you get to the 18 divisions, the 18 categories, which are called datus. There is also uh, one datu or one uh, category which is called uh, dharma datu. Uh, dharma datu is a fancy word for uh, the object of the mind. Okay, so if you divide all the parts of a person out, then those, uh, that group of things which the mind focuses, focuses on at any given time is called the uh, dharma datu. And within the dharma datu, uh, you can have unchanging things. So with three of the groups mentioned, four are you choose, 12 doors of sense and the 18 categories, within there you have a problem. Because within there, each of them are unchanging things, which are said to, uh, it's said that all three groups apply to everything, so all three groups apply to this unchanging thing. One of the groups is dependent things or changing things, and one of the three features of a, of a changing thing is that it exhibits the qualities of a produced thing. So you have a problem here. So we have to resolve this problem. What is it? What? Uh, do you remember uh, I told you to make some marks and make a star on your notes and there's a star up there somewhere. Uh, that was re relative to uh, page 14. So so, uh, you might be able to check it in your notes by, by correlating it to the page. It was page 14, it was the seventh line from the bottom. Uh, I had asked you to make a mark there, so if you look for your marks, uh, then find a mark that's on a page that relates to page 14, seventh line from the bottom. Uh, I asked you to make a mark next to one of the arguments we had with uh, Jonama and uh, Jonamba. And, and uh, we got to go back. And they, we had a couple of arguments with Jonamba, and it's, it's one of them. 
Okay, there should be one argument with the with omniscient genome, but it has a mark in it. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, you know, I did all this before, and you know all this, but uh, maybe we'll just review it so you get a little bit uh, firmer in your mind, okay? Uh, remember that uh, the omniscient Jonamba had said, you know, uh, emptiness of that quality called totality, it is not a negative thing. It is not as you claim it to be a simple absence of, of a self-existent thing. Rather, it is a, it is a positive thing. When you think about it, when you conceptualize it, you bring up a positive picture, and therefore a self-standing positive picture. So when you bring that picture up, that shows that it's a positive thing, the picture is a positive thing. Therefore, emptiness is a, is a positive attribute and not a, a, and not a negative or a simple absence or lack of something. And then Jetsokapa says uh, on this page 14, where he says, Chichen Dujila Chigida, um, he says, no, no, look, you've got to go through this process. First, you choose a particular object. In this case, he says, you choose a produced object, something which is produced. Then you think about it in terms of a, a construct which could be uh, self-existent, right? And then you go through the process of demonstrating that this self-existent thing called the self-nature of objects could never apply to this changing thing. And therefore, uh, we can describe Yongdu, meaning totality or emptiness, as being the simple absence of that non-existent uh, quality of, of self-nature to the to the to the about the changing thing about this changing object. So, uh, Jetsukov is adamant that you arrive at uh, what we call totality or the emptiness of something by canceling uh, a self-existent thing which never could have existed anyway with reference to a changing object. Oh, did you ask that? Is look at the data you can hear it and that. Mm-hmm. We are collecting different necessary information for resolving our issue, okay? So, first of all, we went back, uh, we had gone back around page 25 to where it said, look, those three groups must apply to all these things. And having said that, since you and I know that among three of those groups there are unchanging things, first of all, we've established that uh, all three groups were definitely spoken by Lord Buddha to be applicable to all objects changing or unchanging. So now, that's where the first part of our problem, our issue, the first part of our issue has come from the fact that Lord Buddha has said that they, those three groups must apply, uh, on page 25 he said, must apply to all those groups, uh, all those categories, and then some of those categories are unchanging. That was our first problem. Secondly, we went back to uh, where uh, we were refuting 
one of the wrong ideas of Jonangba. <coughs> and uh, we had made a special point to say that to really understand totality, to really understand emptiness, you must take as your basis a changing object. So you, ch you take as a basis your changing object, you think about it in terms of the constructs that apply to it, you think about the construct that couldn't exist, and the lack of that construct with regard to that changing object is what, is what uh, totality or emptiness is. And so that was the second piece of information uh, that, we needed, that we needed to establish that. Now we go back to a, a third piece of information, okay? All the way back to <coughs> page 11, where we were saying, now what did the Buddha originally mean when he said, nothing has a nature of growing? Nothing has a nature of growing. And we decided that this was referring to that group called dependent things, or things which grow. So, so back there, when we were talking about how to identify what the Buddha was talking about when he said things don't have a nature of growing, we decided, we figured it out, that he was talking about Shenwa. He was talking about dependent things. And then remember that he said those dependent things could be characterized in two ways. One positive, one negative. Okay? Way back on page uh, 11, 10, 11, he, we decided that there had to be a, a positive way of describing those Shenwangs, those dependent things, and there was a negative way of describing those dependent things. The positive way was to say, these things are dependent, or these things are produced, because they come from their causes and conditions. And that was the positive way of saying it. And the negative way of saying it was, they are not, they, they, they could also be characterized negatively by saying that they are not such that they do not come from their causes and conditions. Now all three bits of it, you have now in your hands, all three, uh, all three p bits of information that you need to resolve this issue, okay? Uh, you, you, you've gone back to the first one where the Buddha said, everything must have, Shenwang, the quality of, of uh, dependence, must refer to all existing objects. That was his first thing. And secondly, you have this thing where, to really understand Yongdu, to really understand emptiness, you must go to dependent or changing objects. And then you have the third thing, way back on page 11, where he says, there's a positive aspect, which is that uh, things which are dependent come from their causes and conditions. And there's a negative aspect where it says, things which are dependent do not, are not such that they do not come from their causes and conditions. You now have all three pieces of information you need to resolve this issue that we've been raising. <laughs> Tamagay, Dina, Oh, 
洗车就是，洗车就多啊。我他洗，天洗不得多，可是小几个下小时，天洗不得小几个啦，现在给他什么打样的子，用住小时的。全一件好了，用不着是洗几下了吧？好了，看着就够噻，好洗自己条件了，加的，那那是都是洗一下加的。呃，我给你说的 for you， OK， 我我我 go over that again。So， 呃， it's all kind of scattered out now， it's all spread out now。We'll try to consolidate all this into into one place。Uh， so we got now now I want to describe four different bits of information we need。OK， so first one being back on page eleven where uh。You know, there was a positive aspect of, of dependent things and a negative aspect of dependent things. Let's concentrate on the positive one. Okay, the positive one being the fact that dependent things come from the causes and conditions. So that's one thing. Then go back to the place where we, on page 14, where we were hassling with uh, Janamba, and, and we decided that uh, we establish, uh, we talked about establishing emptiness with regard to changing things, that it was the category of dependence which you have to use as a basis in order to establish dependence. Third bit of information. When we talked about the three characteristics of the group of things called dependent things, then the third of those was that the thing had to come from its causes and conditions, right? So that's the third bit of information I'll give you. Fourth bit of information, page 23. Uh, this is a new one, okay? Uh, fourth line from the bottom, uh, where, we, where we start describing uh, what it is for something to be yondu, or totality, or emptiness. And in that very one, they go through how you need, uh, what, what you need as a basis to establish uh, emptiness, or yondu, okay? What is it that can serve as the basis when you are going to look for the meaning of totality or emptiness? Where do you have to go? What basis do you have to use? And at that point, we, d we decided that the basis was changing things. And that in that uh, scriptural quotation there, from uh, the sutra where the Buddha describes the intent of his own sutras, right? Right there, he goes through the whole process. He says, okay, you want to know what, uh, what emptiness is? This is the point at which he is identifying among the three groups. He's identifying what he means when he says totality or emptiness. And he says, okay, first you take that group called changing things, okay? And then you look at it uh, with regard to uh, different constructs about it you find a construct which doesn't exist with reference to changing things, which is its uh, ultimate gakcha, right? Which is the ultimate thing which emptiness denies. And, and that is what we call the self-nature of objects. And when we deny that with reference to changing things, then we have arrived at yongdu, which is, which is the emptiness or the lack of self-nature to, to changing things. So take those four uh, bits of information that in a positive sense, changing things come from their causes and conditions. Uh, the part around the dispute with Jonamba where we pointed out that to really establish emptiness, you had to do it with regard to changing things. Uh, the third point, which I don't remember, uh, oh, that the third feature is that uh, changing things have a, a, a nature of, of being produced. And then the fourth thing, here, from the sutra itself, where it goes through that process for you of identifying the, the basis on which we, we establish emptiness, which is changing things or yung do things. So those four bits of information, to consolidate for you, or to summarize for you, the whole point here is that up to now, to establish the meaning of emptiness or yung do, we have constantly been taking as our basis shenwongs, changing things, produce things, dependent things. So that's where our that's the, been the big emphasis throughout the whole text up to now on all these different pages. So, so now, how are we going to do it with regard to unchanging things? So now, question for you. Given all that we've been through, given all the explanations we've been through in the last few days, when you are trying to establish the meaning of the third group, when you are trying to establish what it is to be yonder, or totality, or emptiness, uh, on what kinds of basis, you know, um, towards w with regard to what kinds of objects have we been trying to establish it? You know, with what kind of objects have we been using to establish the meaning of emptiness? What were the objects that were empty that we were talking about so far? 
行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行行
to the group in the middle, uh, sorry, in the mind only school when they talk about dependent things. And, and this says, if, if produced things didn't exist, meaning self-existently, meaning by nature, right? Then how on earth, then, then how on earth could non-produced things exist by nature, meaning the emptiness which applies to them, the emptiness which they have? So if the basis for the emptiness, meaning produced things, didn't have any nature of its own, then how could the emptiness, which is its quality, which it adheres to it, how could that have any any quality, any quality of existing by definition? That's one quotation they use to prove that if the basis were not uh, didn't exist by definition, then the then neither could the quality that uh, that it has. Then secondly, he quotes uh, from Do from Sutra. Now they're quoting from another sutra, which says, uh, if if physical matter itself were not to exist self-existently, then how on earth could the very nature of physical matter exist self-existently, meaning its emptiness? So here are, here's a section, here's a chunk from the middle way school where they are saying, look, even those mind-only people would have to agree that if the basis, meaning Shenwang's here, meaning the group of dependent things, if the basis were empty, then how on earth could its ultimate nature not be empty? It would also have to be empty. Okay, so, so this is another piece of information for, our, for helping to solve our problem. Okay? You've got the thing which is empty, if that exists by definition, then the thing which is not empty would also have to exist by definition. Okay. Uh, here we have uh, basically three repetitions of the same point. We have Jetsu Kappa saying that, uh, that, if, uh, that, that if the basis for emptiness didn't exist by definition, then neither could the emptiness which, appl which, which applied to it, right? Which adhered to it. He says it in a logical way. Then he quotes Aryanagarjuna, who says basically the, exactly the same thing. And then he says, if you don't, you know, if Aryanagarjuna is not good enough for you, how about Lord Buddha, you know? And then he quotes Lord Buddha saying the same thing. So even though the wording is different or the phrasing is different in these three steps, uh, Jetsukapa's reasoning, Aryanagarjuna's statement, Lord Buddha's statement, even though there are like, seem to be three different things here, it's actually just repeating the same thing three times for those thick-headed guys to try to get them to understand it. The same point. Uh, let's just, uh, you know, junk it all together and, and, and come down to the bottom line here. The bottom line is that if that object has the emptiness, meaning in this case, dependent things, the shemons, right? If that thing did not exist by definition, then the emptiness that applied to it or adhered to it, which here is called totality, could never exist by definition, period. Okay? That's all you have to think about. If shenwongs didn't exist by definition, yongdus couldn't exist by definition. And, and Jetsu Kappa points out here that even the guys from that last school would have to accept that, right? Now they don't have to accept that those things are, do exist by nature, right? I mean, don't exist by nature. Uh, they don't accept that those things don't exist by nature. But they would have to agree that if one of them didn't exist by nature, then the other one would have to not exist by nature. Even in their school, they'd have to say that. You know, if one uh, were not such that they believed, and the other would have to be not such that they, as they believed either. And, and so even in the other school, meaning the mind-only school, they'd have to agree that if, if it were true that dependent things didn't exist by nature, then the emptiness which, uh, which is, adheres to them or which applies to them couldn't exist by definition either. Even that last school would have to agree with that, says Jetsun Kappa. Well, uh, if I keep going on with more and more uh, 
evidence and more and more uh, clues and more and more information to resolve our issue, probably you get all confused. So let's just stop there and go and clarify the issue and finish it. Uh, didn't we say uh, in, the, in, the, in the fourth of those last uh, things that we talked about, right? I gave you four uh, kinds of evidence you could work off of, uh, four facts or four clues to work off. And the last one was that basically they kept saying that, uh, in fact it was the sutra that said that, uh, when you establish, when you're trying to establish totality or emptiness, what you have to use to establish it with is changing things. By focusing on a changing thing or a dependent thing, then you can go about this process of establishing that it is empty or that it totality applies to it. Do you remember that? Got that? Uh, so, so does it come in your mind clearly? Do you get a clear picture that when we say that the object which we are focusing on when we establish emptiness or totality is a thing which comes from its causes and conditions. Is that clear in your mind? Okay. When we say that, that, that the object that we speak about having emptiness so far in that fourth piece of evidence is an object which comes from its own causes and conditions. That's clear in your mind, right? When we say changing thing or produce thing, in your mind, do, do you see something coming from its causes and conditions? Yes. So you got the, the fourth one is clear in your mind, the fourth point is clear in your mind. It is changing things, things which come from the causes and conditions which we need to use when we establish emptiness or totality. And then you jump to page 120, and you have Jetson Kappa saying that even the mind-only school would agree that if the basis which we are, which we are establishing as being empty existed by definition, uh, existed by definition? Didn't exist by definition. Didn't exist by definition, then neither could the emptiness which applies to it, implying that they believe that the basis does exist by definition, okay? Implying that they believe that the basis of emptiness does exist by definition. See, because Jetson Kappa goes to the, to the extreme of saying, even they would believe that if it didn't exist by definition, then the emptiness that applied to it couldn't exist by definition. So, forget Madhimika for now. Forget that that, we're, that that comes from the Madhimika section. Jetson Kappa is referring to the mind only when he says that even they would agree that if uh, the basis uh, didn't exist by definition, neither could the qualities that it, the emptiness that adheres to that basis exist by definition. Implying that they believe that the basis exists. Yeah. That's something that yes. that, you know, got it. He's setting you up, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> got it, you know. Okay, got it. So the, the basis has to exist by definition, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Take that thing that you just agreed to, that the basis had to exist by definition, right? Put it in your pocket, walk back to that section where Buddha said, oh, this applies to all 12 of the doors of sense. Walk into that little place called the door of sense, which is the object of the mind. Bump into that thing called uh, unchanging thing and tell me how it applies to it. Tell me if there doesn't come some little problem in your mind. You can't apply. Tell me what I need is. Send up a case, send up a shishaches. I am a young chicky teacher, but I am a tapas like a little tongue on the top of the chicky with a little tongue. Tapa could think, 
So you're faced with uh, two, two problems now, you know, t faced with two bad choices. Once you go there, you know, we don't have to talk about the 12 doors of sense and blah, blah, blah. Let's just say a, an unchanging thing, okay? So you've got, you're, you're approaching this unchanging thing. You're carrying this information from page 120 that you just got. So either you're going to have to say that uh, the unchanging thing uh, as the basis of, of, of a yodru, of emptiness, right, uh, doesn't exist by definition. Doesn't does, exist, does exist. Does exist by definition. Yeah. Either, wait a minute. Yeah, that's yeah, the problem. It's absurd. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're going to have to say, you're either going to have to say uh, it does exist by definition. No. Yeah, yeah, that it does exist by definition. Or you're going to have another problem of saying that the emptiness which adheres to it doesn't yeah. exist by definition. So you're going to have these two problems. You bump up against this, this unchanging thing, you're faced with this. Either you're going to have to accept that because it's the basis of its own emptiness, it exists by definition. Uh, or you're going to have to say that the emptiness which apply to it, applies to it doesn't exist by definition. Because they got to match. They have to match. <laughs> ดีเกจะเซมดาเบลลักเรเซียกอซัมเบนานะชาเนทาตาปะตาวิติงดูตาปะตาวิติงดูอันนี้ยังแม่นตาตองชีชีคอชาวตาปะปอราวิติงดู
you know, all this problem, all this hassle is that with that little kind of category that we've been ignoring, we left off to the corner there, which is unchanging things like empty space. We left it off to the corner, we didn't want to talk about it, and now that's coming, that's where we're having all our problems. All our problems are, are centering around that category of stuff. Don't forget, we are in the mind only school. Everything that we're saying this morning is from the viewpoint of the mind only school. A priori, you know, we are in the mind only school. Don't forget, we are in the mind only school. We are, we are taking off. All of this is being said from the viewpoint of a person in the mind only school. ま、あの、ま、あの、ま、あの、ま、あの、ま、あの、ま、あの、ま、あの、ま、あの、ま、あの、ま、あの、ま、あの、ま、あの、ま、あの、ま、あの、ま、あの、ま、あの、ま、あ
And then the second group of thinker, thinkers comes along and says, okay, now let me, let us ask, we're going to ask you a question, okay? Uh, there, is there a state of mind which focuses on that unchanging thing, let's say empty space, okay? And says about it that this is self-existent. Is there a, a state of mind which holds that uh, space, uh, empty space, and looks at it and says, this thing is self-existent, meaning, is there a state of mind that could come along, look at empty space and say, and be focusing on a self-nature of objects with regard to empty space, meaning the subtle self-nature, the subtle form, the subtle flavor of a self-nature, which doesn't exist at all anyway, right? The subtle form of the self-nature of that empty space. Is there a state of mind that could come along and, and, and think that about empty space? that could look at empty space and say, it does have a subtle self-nature, meaning the self-nature of what we call objects, okay? And the other guys say, yeah, of course it could. And then they say, but wouldn't it then be grasping on simultaneously to a subtle self-nature of the state of mind that's looking at empty space at the same time? See what I mean? So not only would it be focusing, if, if what you say is true, and if we have to lump these two together, empty space and the state of mind which perceives empty space, then when a state of mind comes along which misunderstands the nature of empty space and thinks it sees some subtle self-nature to empty space, isn't it actually seeing a subtle self-nature to the state of mind which is perceiving empty space? Okay, and then you have a problem there. So it's not the, the state of mind which is holding empty space to be self-existent is actually also focusing on the state of mind which is focused on empty space and holding that to have some self-existent nature. So you have a problem there because, because actually it's not holding on to the subtle self-nature, quote, self-nature of, of empty space. It's, it's actually grasping on to the subtle self-nature of the state of mind which is focusing on empty space. And there you have a problem because those are actually two different subtle self you know, so-called subtle self-natures. So, so that's a problem with your presentation, says the second group of thinkers, to the first group of thinkers. <laughs> this is getting a little complicated, isn't it? <laughs> Well, I'll give you an example. This got kind of big and complicated. We'll try to make it smaller and more simple. Okay? So, uh, you, you know about uh, water pitchers. You know, think about a water pitcher. And, and when you say, when someone comes along and decides about a water pitcher, oh, water pitchers are impermanent. Water pitchers are changing things, constantly changing things then what does that do to the state of mind which focuses on a water pitcher and says this is an unchanging thing or it doesn't change instant by instant, okay? There is a state of mind which holds, to, looks at a water pitcher and says about it, this thing is not changing instant by instant. But then when someone comes along and says, hey, water pitchers are changing water instant by instant, what does that do to the state of mind which was thinking this thing is not changing instant by instant? Damages. Damages. It didn't progress. That, what you could say it conversely, which is that uh, if, you, if you focused on the state of mind which believes that a water pitcher is unchanging, and if you were able to stop it from thinking of it that way, then in a sense it would become a state of mind that was thinking that it was changing all the time. Okay? So you could do it conversely. You could take the state of mind which is holding the water pitcher to be unchanging, and if you could sort of reverse it or stop it or stop that state of mind, then you could come to the conclusion that the water pitcher is something which is changing. <laughs> Uh, you guys all know and you're all sensitive to the fact that a water pitcher is something that is changing moment by moment. Okay? But if you had a state of mind which was holding it 
and thinking about a water pitcher in such a way as to say, this thing is not changing moment by moment. Now, if you could cancel that state of mind, what would, what would result? You'd have a state of mind which was sure that the thing was changing moment by moment. So, so if you took the state of mind which thought that a water pitcher was not changing, it was like believing that a water pitcher was not changing moment by moment, if you destroyed it, then what would you, what would you come out with? You'd come out with a state of mind that it held that the water pitcher was changing moment by moment. ちょっと待ってください。はい、ちょっと待ってください。はい、ちょっと待ってください。はい、ちょっと待ってください。はい、ちょっと待ってください。はい、ちょっと待ってください。はい、ちょっと待ってください。はい、ちょっと待ってください
exactly the same problem. So the first group of thinkers makes this very nice refutation of the second group of thinkers. So what do you guys think, you know, uh, when the first group of thinkers goes up to the second group of thinkers and says, I'm, I'm sorry, when the second group of thinkers goes to the first group of thinkers and says, look, you have a problem. You're lumping these th two things together, okay? And by lumping these two things together, you incur a new problem. What's that problem? You, there's a state of mind which holds that space has a subtle self-nature. And then there's another state of mind that, that holds that, that the perception of space has a subtle self-nature. And you're saying that the state of mind which holds that space has a subtle self-nature, then is automatically holding that the state of mind which, which is holding on to space has its own subtle self-nature. Uh, in a sense, you're lumping them together and saying that the misperception that they have a subtle self-nature is thinking that about both of them. Now, do you guys think that's a problem? It seems like you're fine if you found the young group, it would be the young group of the perception and not the young group of the young group of the perception that is a problem that <coughs> some people say that he says some people say that by establishing what you oh, really what you're really only doing is establishing the emptiness or the totality of the perception of empty space and you are not really establishing the totality of empty space okay and then the other guys come along and say well, what are we supposed to do? You know, we got one, two, three, four different references here that say we got to have a Shenwang here. We got to have a dependent thing in order to establish a totality. We got to get a, a, a dependent thing in here somehow. You know? And and so, uh, you know, what do you want us to do? You know, we have to, we have to find a dependent thing uh, to come up with in order to describe the totality of empty space. And that's what we came up with. ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、
uh, there's an example that's used to describe how the first group of thinkers is complaining about the second group of thinkers. And you could say that the first group of thinkers are saying, you know, you're just like that story about the guy who was sick. Okay, there was some guy lying in bed and, and he was sick. And he's uh, sick in a room like this. And the room has two doors, uh, one to the west, one to the east. Okay, an eastern opening to the room and a western opening to the room. And then uh, this guy's here in the bed calls his mama, you know, and he, he's like a, a, a layman, right? And he calls his mama and he says, could you please, you know, use your supernatural powers and figure out how, how come I'm sick, you know, why am I getting sick? And the Lama does this thing and says, oh, you know, there's a harmful spirit, what we call an illness spirit in, in Tibetan. And uh, he's hanging around the eastern door here. He's been coming in the eastern door and he lives out there outside the east door and he keeps coming in and, and causing you to be sick, to be ill. So you have to do what's called, there's some kind of like a Toma offering to the, to the spirit, which, which, is, uh, which is called uh, a ransom. Okay, it's like, it's called, the, the name of it is a ransom. So, so you should uh, put together one of these little ransom offerings and go stick it outside the east door and, and take care of it. You know, he'll take the ransom offering and you'll get better. So the guy, the guy is sick, you know, he, he orders somebody who makes this offering. And then instead of taking the torma out to the east door, they go and put it in the wrong door. They go stick it outside the west side door. And so the, the thinkers who are complaining about the thinkers who want to lump together space and the perception space say, you're just like that guy, you know, you're going the wrong way. You know, you're, you're, you're taking your solution and, and putting it in the wrong way. Your solution is a misapplied. Okay? You're, you're, it's, a mis it's a misapplication. It's not a good solution. That's uh, the, uh, the point here is that, that the one group of thinkers is going to criticize the other group of thinkers. And he says, you don't have to think of it in terms of sickness and ransoms and all that. <laughs> think of it in terms of a, a thief that keeps breaking into your house. He's always breaking into the eastern door, and he's never coming to the west door. So instead of locking this door and making it tight, <laughs> uh, you go to the west door and make sure you have lots of locks on that door. Uh, you can think of it that way. So the second, uh, sorry, the first group of thinkers is going to the other group of thinkers and saying, uh, in fact, it, it sounds now, now almost like he's talking about a third group of thinkers. But anyway, some group of thinkers is complaining about the second group of thinkers. And, and here it is on page 92 is where they issue their complaint. Oh,今夜的我是不是困难？没事，我以为是中途。哦，困难的，你刚刚把它困难的，天哪，真的。今天的，哦，今天呢，是我这几天我都在用吧。那是嘛，都他们也不说要去，他们也去就好了。困难，
that is dependent things. So sh you should go to dependent things. Don't, don't go grouping things together. Go to dependent things themselves, which are the things that people often take to be self-existent, and prove, uh, go about establishing emptiness with regard to those changing things. Now that's, wh that's what Jetun Kappa says. And he, and he says, uh, any other way of identifying what emptiness is or, or totality is will not be of benefit uh, in, in finding, in, in, in damaging the tendency to hold things as self-existent. Now, Jetson Kava only says that, but this one group of uh, thinkers says, here's the evidence that Jetson Kava did not agree with your idea of lumping those two things together. <laughs> So they say that the meaning of this, of this section here with Jetson Kabe is that Jetson Kabe is saying, look you guys, when you want to establish the emptiness of the totality of an unchanging thing like empty space, don't go try to establish the emptiness of totality of some other thing, meaning the perception of empty space. So go ahead and try to establish it with regard to an unchanging thing. Don't go try to throw in an extra changing thing and, and try to establish totality or emptiness with regard to the changing thing. Go ahead on the basis of the unchanging thing alone and try to establish the totality or emptiness of that. Don't go bringing in another thing which is changing in order to establish this. Okay, So, wouldn't you agree that if we really look at this quotation, this particular section of Jetson Kappa's text, that he seems to be saying, look, the totality or the emptiness of empty space, which is an unchanging thing, unproduced thing, and then the totality or emptiness of, a, of the produced thing, which is the perception which is holding on to empty space, right? The perception of empty space. Don't you have to agree that they are em different things? They are different emptinesses. These are two different emptinesses. And doesn't it, in light of this particular section of Jetson Kappa's text, become a little bit uncomfortable to say that the, that the emptiness of the perception of space is the same as the emptiness of space itself. Doesn't it become sort of weird to try to establish the emptiness of space by throwing in the emptiness of the perception of space? Th don't you agree? Yeah. In light of these words. Let's be done with this. ニカロヤギテジョロトモルシミチソンミレヤタイエイシーマイジワナイナリパンティディドダンタワシルキムトトタンサイディソンサジムタンチョロトモルシミヤチキチキヤゲコツケワシェンダーティシヤワティタボチ
So you really now have an expression of a clear expression of the two different uh, schools of thought, the original two schools of thought, okay? The first thinkers coming along and utune, right? Out of desperation, you know, or or or, or just demanding or insisting that given all of what Jason Kappa said before, there must be some kind of changing thing that we can throw in here to, to when we want to establish the emptiness of, of empty space, of space itself, okay? So there's this first school, you know, given everything that Jetson Kappa says, they are desperately trying to insert or uh, some kind of changing thing. And then you have the second school saying, look, Jetson Kappa said himself, you know, each different thing in the world, each different object in the world, be it changing, unchanging, produced, unproduced, each different object in the world has its own emptiness. Each different object in the world can be established as having its own totality in and of itself. You don't have to go lumping other things with it, you know. We should be able to establish, with regard to every uh, object in the world, its particular yong, its particular totality or, or emptiness. Those are the two schools. <laughs> On this single issue, we've about to we've just about blown our two hours out of the so far. Today has been a big hassle, big lot of issues. This, is, this one issue has been very consuming and almost used up our period, didn't we? That's okay. <laughs> For purposes of illustration only, okay, don't forget your mind only school, but for purposes of illustration only, we will open up this door of Madhimika because I know you've had some teachings on Madhimika and I know, uh, I know that you're more familiar actually with Madhimika. So, so for purposes of illustration only, we will allow you to slip back to that door there. Now, when you're thinking about uh, establishing the emptiness of a, of a water pitcher, okay? When you're thinking about a water pitcher and trying to figure out what it means for a water pitcher to be empty, then you sit there hour after hour thinking about water pitcher, thinking about its emptiness, thinking about why it's empty, thinking about how it's empty. It's a sort of a positive state of mind, right? Trying to figure something out about a water pitcher. But if you truly think about it, isn't it really that you are undertaking the task of removing a, a, a mistaken state of mind? You see, it's not so much that you are sitting there thinking about, in positive terms, oh, this is what the emptiness of a water pitcher would be, this is what it would be. Actually, you're, the task you're undertaking at that moment is to destroy or to stop a state of mind which does believe that the water pitcher is not empty, isn't it? Uh, what kind of mistaken idea do you think you're trying to stop at that point? How would you characterize that mistaken idea? How, what is that mistaken idea? Oh boy, here we go. When you are sitting there and focusing on the picture and thinking of reasons why it's not self-existent, right, your main task that you're undertaking is to remove or to stop or prevent that state of mind which holds the base to be self-existent, okay? And when you manage to damage or destroy the idea that the water pitcher itself is self-existent, are you in any way damaging the idea that the state of mind which is holding the water pitcher is itself self-existent? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 
And when you were sitting there uh, working very hard on trying to understand the emptiness of the water pitcher, was it your intention, you know, when you sat down to do that job and started to consider very carefully the emptiness of the water pitcher, was it your idea, I'm going to try to stop the state of mind that holds the water pitcher to be self-existent? Or were you thinking, I want to stop the state of mind that holds the state of mind that holds the water pitcher to be self-existent? Now, which one was it? ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、
개바찌기 개바시야 나한테 다시 나시 나서 다시 고 수목이 되게 깨져 치야 아스마가 약에 고와 탄고 탄고 달라 이래서 아시 나서 말라 수목이 수지 풍부지 모두 태어나 뱃살 고다 수목 고랑 샤송아스 대나시 이제 동아 개배 용도 때 쇼사 고나야 동아 개바 고랑 쇼 생각 세고 다니가 아니 이제 치야 Uh, so now the text says, oh, you have to uh, talk about uh, the object which is that the object which is being labeled, right? The object that we're thinking about mm, with concepts, right? With constructs. Uh, in the same way with uh, the truth of suffering as, as we did before. Okay, so as we did before, you have to find the thing it is that we're focusing on to establish, for example, the three groups. Okay, so. Uh, There are two ways of thinking about this. You know, some people say when he said as before, he was talking about the n a r s h a n said the c h i k d i la kebo s u m e j a n Page 25, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines from the bottom. I lost it. Okay. Okay. Chikdi n a r s h a n la zengar ti t a k t e la kari shiya. Shiawan kala kechu sumi du. Oh, te la zugu zu, kwa zugu zu. 최강다가이는그노도조수시시야왕고라야기디과스나티나시야게티케바시다치기이케주숨대고라두구마토치양가스에고콜라 Uh, page 25, eighth line from the bottom, it says, you have to talk about, you have to establish the object that we're discussing, the object that we're focusing on when we establish the three groups, especially uh, emptiness, for example, uh, in the way that we did it before. When you talk about the, noble, uh, the Arya truth of suffering, then you have to establish the the thing that you use to establish the three groups in the same way as before. And now there are two different takes on that word as we did before. Okay, there are two different takes on it. Some people say that it refers to the idea that talk, it refers back to the three features of dependent things. Remember uh, that it was the arena, that it was the thing getting labeled, and that it was uh, going from its causes and conditions. Some people say this as it was before. is referring to the fact that whatever you take as the object to discuss its emptiness, you have to go back to those three characteristics before that we mentioned when we talked about dependent, thing, dependent things. That's one take on this phrase here when it says, you have to go back and think about the thing which you're trying to establish as empty, or uh, trying to establish as having those three groups apply to it in the same way as we did before. Some people say that means go back to the three features and establish that it, through those three features. But other people have come along and said, no, 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 that's not what it means. That's not what as before means when you're talking about figuring out the thing it is that you're trying to establish has those three groups. Okay, they say, remember before when they were, trying to they were establishing the three groups with regard to physical matter, physical objects, your physical body, the first of the five heaps. In that case, when they had to talk about the three groups with the about the five heaps, They took the five heaps as the object and then discussed the three groups with relation to them. They tried to establish how the three groups applied to the object that they were talking about. And now, now that you've gotten to the first truth, of, the, first truth the tr truth of suffering, the point here is that when you're talking about the three groups, about the, three tru uh, about the first truth of suffering, you take that same thing as the object of your discussion and you look, at, you look about the three What it means as before means now switch to the new object and discuss the three attributes with regard to that object. And that's what it means to do it as we did before. So as we did before is taken in two ways. One is, got to go back to the three features of Shenwa. The other is, the point, when they say as before, what they're saying is that take that same object and look at it as, as to whether or not it has the three attributes. As before we took the The, the heap of physical matter. Now that you're on to the first noble truth, of, uh, the first eye of truth, take the first eye of truth is what you're going to talk about. And that's what it means when he says, do it as before.
왔다 이제 다시 고자 합시다. 다시 쭉 가는 데 레전디아. 그럼 축사도 얘기 나는 쭉 왔다. 이게 뭐지? 얘나? 내가 고자 쭉 가상한 지 나와라. 쭉 가도 쭉. 다 되네 고자 합시다. 아. ตัวเกี่ยวกับเรื่องนี้ที่ว่าตามความเป็นเรื่องมากเลยแต่ว่าตามความเป็นเรื่องสามารถที่จะได้ดีอย่างทุกสัปดาห์ที่เขาเสีย